This is Malika Hook from the University of Colorado, and the topic today is malignant glaucoma in this edition of One Slide in Five Minutes. Malignant glaucoma is a relatively rare form of secondary angle closure glaucoma, often correlating with intraocular surgery in eyes with narrow angles or synechial closure, although it can occur in open angles and even post non-invasive laser procedures like cyclophotocoagulation and laser iridotomy. Other terms used to describe the disease process include aqueous misdirection and ciliary block glaucoma. On exam, patients often present with a red painful eye and decrease in vision. There is a higher incidence of malignant glaucoma in hyperopic eyes with short axial length. The intraocular pressure is often very elevated but may present with normal or lower pressures leading to confusion about the diagnosis. Key to diagnosis is a flat chamber with both iris and lens positioned anteriorly and almost a flat anterior chamber. The cornea shows signs of edema from both the elevated IOP as well as iris and lens touch. This should be distinguished from any postoperative swelling of the cornea. You can see on exam here an edematous cornea along with a very shallow central anterior chamber and movement of both the iris and the lens anteriorly to touch the cornea. This can also be seen with ultrasound by a microscopy where both the iris and the lens are positioned anteriorly and in many places touching the cornea. The opposite eye central anterior chamber is typically deep and this is one clue to distinguish malignant glaucoma from acute primary angle closure where the anterior chambers of both eyes are more symmetric. Optically clear aqueous zones have been described in the vitreous cavity although I have not seen this in my experience. History of intraocular surgery and lasers should be explored including pars plana vitrectomy, trabeculectomy, and lasers as mentioned before. Starting or stopping both cycloplegics as well as meiotics have also been connected to the development of malignant glaucoma and should be part of clinical history taking when possible. The cause of malignant glaucoma or aqueous misdirection is controversial. It is classically thought to be due to posterior misdirection of the aqueous humor with relative block of fluid flow past the lens equator, vitreous face, and ciliary processes. Other factors such as propensity for the chorea to expand and for reduced vitreous fluid conductivity have also been proposed. Malignant glaucoma is a diagnosis of exclusion, and more common processes should be considered and ruled out with clinical exam and ultrasound as appropriate. Some of the differential diagnoses include pupillary block with angle closure glaucoma, choroidal effusion, and suprachoroidal hemorrhage. Medical management includes intensive cycloplegia, we use atropine 1% QID, and use of IOP lowering medications as the mainstay of early therapy. Avoid use of meiotics like pilocarpine, which can worsen anterior chamber shallowing. Laser or peripheral iridotomy should be completed when possible and may help distinguish the clinical picture from a primary angle closure process. The chamber often deepens in the setting of primary angle closure but does not with malignant glaucoma unless the vitreous face is also disrupted by focusing laser energy through the lens annuals and onto the anterior vitreous face. While the literature suggests that half of malignant glaucoma cases can be controlled with medications and laser alone, it is my experience that surgical intervention with iridozonulohyloidectomy, or IZH, is often required and should not be delayed if less invasive approaches are not successful. Posterior vitrectomy with meticulous anterior hyloidozonulectomy is an approach that can be employed if all the above techniques fail, although IZH has been quite successful in our hands. One final note, occurrence of malignant glaucoma in one eye increases the risk of occurrence in the contralateral eye at the time of surgery if and when needed. This should prompt prophylactic IZH in the contralateral eye with proper education and consenting of the patient to set appropriate expectations. Consider visiting keogt.com as well as the YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram channels you see here for further educational content. Thank you for your time.